Hello everyone and welcome to this video on what is path analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods including path analysis, structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to provide you with a very basic introduction to path analysis. So this video is meant for people who have never heard of path analysis or always want to learn about path analysis. And so far, maybe you have only um, had basic statistics training. You've learned about correlation analysis, maybe linear regression analysis, maybe analysis of variance. And now you want to know what is path analysis. So here on a very conceptual level, I want to introduce this basic idea to you. And a good way to start learning about path analysis is by reviewing regression analysis. So specifically multiple regression. And I'm going to walk you here through a basic multiple linear regression model first, and then we'll see how that relates to a path analysis, which as you will see, is a closely related multivariate statistical technique. In multiple regression analysis, we consider a single dependent variable or outcome variable here indicated as Y. So this is our variable that we want to predict from other variables. And in this case, I have a multiple regression model with two predictor variables or independent variables X1 and X2. And so in this multiple regression model, X1 and X2 serve to predict variance or to explain variance in the dependent variable y. This is done by fitting a linear equation which looks like this where y is on the left hand side of the equal sign and on the right hand side you have an intercept b0 which is not shown above in the path diagram and then you have um, b1 times x1 as one term. So b1 is the regression coefficient or regression weight that characterizes the relationship between x1 and y when x2 is also in the model. Therefore, we call b1 a partial regression coefficient or a partial regression slope coefficient because it is about the linear association between x1 and y in the presence of x2. So the relationship that x1 and x2 may have that is indicated here with this double headed arrow. So the covariance or correlation between x1 and x2 is taken into account when b1 and b2 are estimated. b2 then is the partial regression coefficient for x2 that characterizes the linear influence or the linear association between x2 and y in the presence of x1. Furthermore, there is a residual or error term at the end, E, so E is the error in the prediction of Y from X1 and X2, and that characterizes other causes of Y or other determinants of Y that are not included in X1 and X2, including random measurement error that is also present in Y as well as potential nonlinear effects. Um, between those predictors and Y or interactive effects between those predictors that are also in this case not represented in this model. So this is a multiple regression model with two predictors and you can see it can be described with a single regression equation. We can estimate such a model in standard statistical software such as SPSS or R or other uh, programs, it's a very standard model. Now, how does multiple regression analysis relate to path analysis? In path analysis, the difference is that we have multiple dependent variables. Regression analysis only allows for a single dependent variable, whereas in path analysis, we can have 
multiple dependent variables and multiple independent variables. And not only that, we can also have variables that we call intermediate variables or mediator variables that are in between a so-called exogenous variable and an endogenous variable. In this case, in this picture here, this would be the variable m. You can see m is influenced by x. X would be seen as the exogenous variable in this model because it is not influenced by any other model, but, excuse me, by any other variable in this model. And Y is our endo endogenous variable because it gets explained in the model. Also, M is an endogenous variable because it is explained by X. And so X predicts M and then M predicts Y. And so M is a mediator. It mediates part of the effect that goes from X to Y. So some of that effect is not direct. It is mediated through M. And so therefore we can have quite complex models in path analysis, a lot more complex than in multiple regression analysis where we're always limited to one dependent variable and a set of predictor or independent variables and there are no intermediate variables. So it's always direct, so to say. Now there are ways in multiple regression to estimate certain mediator models by running multiple different regression equations sequentially. So that does work under certain conditions, but path analysis is the more general model that allows you to estimate all those paths in one single step. You specify your one model and then you get all those paths, all those regression coefficients at once. And it can be a complex chain of mediator variables. There can be multiple exogenous variables, multiple mediator variables, multiple dependent variables in the model. And for the dependent, for the multiple dependent variables, the error terms can be correlated if they have shared residual variances and so on. So path analysis is a more general model that entails multiple regression as a special case when there's only one dependent variable and only one set of independent variables that all have only direct effects on the dependent variable. And so since path analysis takes into account multiple dependent variables, typically it consists of a set of simultaneous regression equations where we have more than one. So in this model, for example, we have one equation for y where y is an intercept plus a b coefficient times m plus a c prime coefficient times x plus an error term. And so the b and c prime coefficients are partial regression coefficients. Again, they are they have the same interpretation and the same mathematical definition as in multiple regression analysis. They are just typically in a mediation model denoted differently. So a typical uh, notation for a mediation model like this is that the XM path is denoted as A and the MY path is denoted as B and then the direct path from X to Y is denoted as C or C prime. But we could also use B1 and B2 and B3 and B whatever. So that's really arbitrary how we denote these. And these are really partial regression coefficients as before. They have the same meaning as in linear regression analysis. And so then there's a second equation here because M is also a dependent variable or an endogenous variable in this model. So M also gets an equation. And in this case, it's a bivariate regression equation because M depends only on X with the A coefficient being that um, simple linear regression coefficient for the regression of M on X. And so these two regression equations are estimated simultaneously in path analysis when you use programs that can handle path analysis. Now, what is another difference between path analysis and multiple regression analysis? Path analysis is also more flexible in that it allows you to implement parameter constraints. And so one very simple implicit constraint is to leave out certain paths. So remember that in multiple regression analysis in SPSS, you click over your dependent variable and you, then your predictor variables and SPSS will just simply estimate all the B coefficients for all predictors, regardless of 
whether they are significant or zero or non or not zero or whatever and so in path analysis we have a more theory driven approach typically where we decide beforehand which paths do we implicitly set to zero so for example we might have the hypothesis that x does only have an indirect effect on y that is mediated through m so maybe x um, really causes m and then m causes y and x does not have a direct effect c prime on y and so we might then set up a model where the c prime coefficient is not estimated where it's implicitly set to zero and then that model is a so-called over-identified model it becomes a non-saturated model whereas all multiple regression models are saturated meaning they estimate all the parameters that um, can be estimated based on the data whereas here we might put in certain constraints that then lead to a model with positive degrees of freedom where the model is over identified as we say non-saturated so that it contains testable restrictions about certain parameters and then that can be tested with an overall goodness of fit test for the model for example a chi-square test can be used to fit the entire model with its constraints against the data and then we can um, for example reject a model if a model is found to not fit it can be falsified based on tests of model fit whereas standard multiple regression models are always saturated and they therefore would not yield a meaningful overall test of fit other than of course you can look at r squared and measures like that but you could not really fit the model or test the model against your data because the model always trivially fits perfectly being a saturated model now this path analysis model that you see here is also saturated so this would also not yield a meaningful test of model fit but um, in many cases path analytic models will be over identified because they will omit certain direct paths um, between variables and then they will have positive degrees of freedom and they'll be testable also there might be other constraints that you can test like for example equality constraints between paths or between groups when you want to make group comparisons you might test whether the paths are the same across different groups so path analysis allows for a lot more flexibility in estimating complex relationships between variables than does multiple regression analysis. Now, where do you estimate a model like that? Obviously in SPSS that wouldn't work unless you have a saturated model, in which case you could piece it together with multiple regression um, analyses. But typically we estimate these models in a single step using programs for structural equation modeling. So programs like M plus, like the Lavan package in R, Amos is another program, EQS, Lisrel, OpenMX is also an R package that does these models. And there are many other programs now that allow you to do structural equation modeling. If you want to learn more about how you can run path analysis or factor analysis or structural equation modeling in M plus, then check out the other videos here on this channel and I also have some videos on Lavan how to uh, get started with Lavan on these types of models. I hope you found this video useful to learn the basics of path analysis. If you did then please consider subscribing to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.